I thought it was the corporate life. I thought it was corporate success. I thought it was money. I thought it was a life of comfort. But I realized too that uh, you can have these things and yet not be happy. I tried to follow the success formula. Go to a top university, uh, get a, a top corporate job, you know, marry a good woman, uh, live in an exclusive subdivision, send your children to exclusive schools, go to church on Sundays and give to charity. But I realized that was at a certain point it was it was not the perfect formula because it was also it perpetuated poverty because I created an artificial bubble of comfort and safety and you know but I ignored the suffering of the of the people around me and so instead of complaining about the government as complaining about the rich I realized that they were not the problem I was the problem I realized that hey something is wrong terribly wrong distribution of justice and wealth in this country sucks big time do you have access to water potable water do you have do you have access do your children have access to education uh, do you have do you feel secure in your homes do you have access to electricity do you have enough food We've gotten so used to the part that poverty is part of the Filipino identity. We've refused to do something about it. We revel in our own poverty sometimes. Only because we've been seeing it through generations so much, it's become part of the landscape. And that is not a normal way for any society to function. It is a behavioral issue with an economic consequence. It is, again, it's a spiritual issue in the sense that we did not practice what we preached. Antonio Melotto. My mission is to help end poverty in my country uh, together with, uh, with everyone who loves this country. So you have to understand that when the King of Spain signed the decree that the Philippines was his, all lands belonged to him. And that one act of taking control of the land, I think, was the beginning of our poverty. The land was not only a source of food, it was the source of business. It was our entrepreneurial partner. Since land is there and man needs land to survive, he just has to have a place to sleep. And if you take that away from him, what exchanges it is fear. When your survival is threatened, your first instinctive by design reaction is fear. And so our people are in fear. The first order of the day was for me to go back to the poor where I came from and uh, without having to neglect my own family. So I live in Quezon City and I decided to go to the biggest uh, slum in the country called Bagong Silang, north of Manila, which is just about uh, an hour's drive from my home. When you drive into Bagong Silang, you're driving through one of the worst slums in the whole country. And uh, Tita Tony describes it as the University of Crime of the Philippines. I guess it was just that one year when all of a sudden um, he would be out by the time that we were we would be awake. And then if I'd ask my mom, oh, where's Papa? Ah, he's in Bagong Silang because he'd be there at the crack of dawn. And he asked us to to join him in, in, a, in, in an immersion uh, trip in Bagong Silang, which lasted for about more than a week. So we were there and uh, um, getting to know how it feels to, to, to really build homes for the poor. At, you know, this started by uh, going to their place and uh, understanding them, just being there, and then eventually uh, helping them out. You know? uh, we saw that they needed roof, 
or their house was really in a very bad situation. So we said, why don't we help them? No? So that, that was the early part of Gawad Kalinga. So little did I know uh, that journey started in 1999. Um, it would, it would uh, blossom into, into something which we now call Gawad Kalinga. Gawad Kalinga and Jardine Lloyd Thompson, together with Film Life Insurance Corporation and Stake Escape, present Bagong Silang the Musical. <laughs> Bagong Silang the Musical was my dad's way of rehabilitating the youth. Instead of going to a rehab center or whatever, na parang he wanted these children to engage in the arts, in dancing, in singing, and to really harness their talent. Because these youth, parang, they're so talented, but no one just gave them opportun the opportunity to, to show off, to show off their skills. So he sent like the best, one of the best directors, theater directors in the Philippines, one of the best choreographers in the Philippines. As he, like, as he always says, the best for the least. So the poor always deserves the best. Bagong Silang is the biggest um, relocation area here in the Philippines. That's where they all dump everyone that they um, demolish and they just bring it there. These were drug addicts, these were gang members, these are people na sa Commonwealth sila yung mag pickpocket sa yung mga hold up sa And in that, in, even in that youth camp, they had their mga balisong, their all of this mga ano, knives and whatnot. It was scary, especially for a dad, but he knew that he had to do it because how would they trust him? if he can't even bring his own family to them. I had no idea what he was doing there until he brought me there um, one day after Christmas in 1995, I think, or 1996. And that's when I found out what he was up to. And that was the youth camp for, I'm sure he talked about it already, the youth camp in Bagong Silang with all the gang members and um, the juvenile delinquents and stuff. And it made such a big impression on me that I even did my fourth year thesis on Bagong Silang. So where else would you start if you really want to make a big change and you start with the biggest? Right. So he went to Bagong Silang. At the age of 20, I was able to borrow money from Prince Charles to start a business in computer games through his foundation. And that business became very successful. It became the first dot-com business on the London Stock Exchange. And it made me, according to the newspapers, uh, the ninth richest person in England under the age of 30. I had all of these things, but somehow it felt like it was really empty. And no matter what I had, it would never be enough. And I started to understand this difference between pleasure and happiness. And I, I went around the world looking at different charities, trying to find something that I could really believe in, that I could personally help. Then a Filipino friend of mine told me about Gawad Kilinga. So I spent two weeks trying to get hold of Tony Milato. And uh, finally, on the day before my last day here, he answered his phone. I was trying to get hold of him through every channel I could think of. Finally, he agreed to meet me. My intention when I saw Gawad Kilinga was just to make a donation. I got back home to England, I saw the brand new BMW that I just bought myself a few weeks before and for the first time I really felt sick because I looked at this car and I thought wow this car is worth about 80 houses in the Philippines and I emailed Tony Milato and I said I've made a decision I'm selling my car and I want to send you the money please build a village call it the BMW village and where should I send you the money what did he say his response changed my life he said if you really want to help I don't need your money why don't you come back and spend more time in the Philippines and learn about what we're doing and maybe you can help us decide how to use that money. Pero amo ni nga dako nga relocation pila ka balay ka pila ka do ang do pila ka pamilya tanan na di ang relocation sa kadto hectares.
Yes, I do. You do? Yes. It's what you call experiential learning. So I am now working with farmers. I was never into agriculture, but they're teaching me uh, you know, what trees will grow, what vegetables to grow during the rainy season, how to create abundance out of our wasteland. At 63, I'm not too old to learn. And at, at, young, at, 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 at uh, 18 years old, they're not too young to dream big for, for our country. I want that even the poorest of the poor will wake up every day to say to himself, I'm a human being because I live in a decent home painted with brightly colored houses, with landscape gardens. I am no longer an animal living in an animal pen. So every day, a, per a human being wakes up and sees that he's human again. And for me, the goal of development is to restore our humanity because poverty has made us subhuman and uh, made us predatory and we are on a survival mode. And so what we are seeing here that we use the education that we get in finance, in management, in agriculture, in science, and we bring it together. So we are here to create a template so that all of those houses here, this will become now the standard, the model. So the city bought 26 hectares of land and starting with 2.8 hectares, they're asking us to create this, uh, this model community. We get all the support from government, we get the support. These are schools. We have, I think, how many schools do we have today? We have Riverside, we have NOHS, La Salle. we have La Salle, we have Sainsco, we have San Agustin. So they are from different schools. And what about the house? Can you describe the house you have in mind? Yes, uh, what we would like is a house that will not be blown down when there is a typhoon. See, this is this is passing goodness from generation to generation. Passing the dream of Gawad Kalinga to the end poverty from parents to children, eventually to grandchildren. We're now talking about sustainable development. Yung isang may pamilyang anak ko dito sa taas, kami naman sa baba. So, ito na itsura ng aming ano, yung bahay namin. Uh, bali ito po yung mga beneficiary, yung apiktado ng sunog nung 2011. So, sila po yung mga nakatira dito lahat, kami lahat ito. Dito muna kami temporary nakatira. Dito yan. So, ayun, nagtayo kami dito kasi kailangan tirahan mo temporary. Eh. Kasi wala na, nasunog na yung bahay mo eh. Yan o. Oh. So, uh, lilipat po kami dito by December 17. Iyon na po yung araw na kung saan po i-raffle na yung aming mga pangalan kasi tapos na yung aming mga bahay. Squawker talaga kami ganito kami ng diliman. Uh, Nabimuris kami hanggang sa nakarating kami dito. Ano, inalok po kami ng gawad kalinga. Noong una po ayaw namin. Ayaw namin ng gawad kalinga. Pero nung yes, kumbaga hindi sila tumigil, na ipa ipa imulat sa amin kung ano ba talaga yung gawad kalinga nung naintindihan po namin yun na uh, nag-start na po sila ng tinanong na kami kung handa kami mag-values permission yun so tinawa po namin So, mahaba po ito hanggang paikot po ito eh. Hanggang dito. Dito lang po, yung dito mga ano na yung iba na or tenants na yung iba. Pero dito, ito na yung mga beneficiaries talaga. 80 ano kayo eh, 80 sa ngayon po 80 families kami pero hindi po 80 kasi depende po doon sa nakapag-comply ng sistema natin, four pillars. So, meron first batch, may second batch. So, abang dito kami, ginagawa namin yung aming mga lilipatan na bahay. Kami na rin mismo ang gumagawa niyan. Si 
foundation po ito. Ang first is yun natin is katapatan. Ang pangalawa po natin ay panindigan sa pagbabaho. Ang pangatlo ay pangarap sa kinabukasan ng pamilya. As a benefit bilang isang tao, yun po ang isa nating layunin sa buhay na magiging masaya tayo. Pag sinabing natin tapat, ano, anong pag-uunawa ninyo? Anong kahulugan nito? Tapat sa lahat ng bagay, tapat sa lahat ng mga tapat sa mga tao, mabuting tao. Why is it important for the beneficiaries to have the values even before they move into the homes. So this whole values formation um, effort is really important because, you know, we're moving people from their poverty state to a life state. There are values they carry in their uh, poverty state you know, that need to be, uh, that need to go with the transformation that's happening. Now GK comes off with the home and then in the home, uh, you know, as uh, the family enters the home, they are introduced into a way of life of family. Family happens. No? Now there is the father, now there is the mother, and now there are the children. Before, of course, there were fathers, but they were all over the place. The mothers, they were all over the place. And then children scattered on the streets. There was no semblance of family. But because of the home, now there is family. No? And because we are going to journey them to a new life as a family, you know, uh, they needed to understand values. They needed to, to understand that, you know, well, values is not, you know, something they are uh, like schooled in, you know, educated, you know, but something that they live, something that they live. And so it will much depend on them where they're coming from. That's why it's... Uh, it's brought to them, yes, it's brought to them, but it's encouraged in, a, in, a, in the life of the community. No? So that uh, it's important that the values get settled personally, but within the scope of community life. Okay, so yung mga team leader, ah. Bawat team leader po, atayo po kayo sa harapan para i-report ninyo. Ano yung napakasundo niyo? Kasagutan doon sa tanong natin dalawa, eh. Sir, po tayo 3 minutes para sagutin to, ha. Pwede sa isang banda, kung kaya dapat tulungan ng mahina. Dahil sa wala siyang kakayahan, lalo na sa pinansya. Pero hindi hindi lahat ng mahirap ay dapat tulungan. Tayo rin mahirap, pwede rin tayong tumulong. Tsaka gusto Gustong magsikap siya na unlad siya. Yun ang dapat na tulungan. Pero may mga mahirap na may mga suwain. Na, na, eh. na, ah, mahirap na, ako. Wala naman akong ano eh. At dapat tulungan lang nila ako. Eh, parang umasa sa tulong. Pa, mali din yun. Diba? Kailangan magsisikap din. Umaasa lang sa tulong, tulong ng iba. Walang Pero hindi lang ang mayayaman ang tumutulong oh. sa mahirap. Kundi tayo rin kapag mahirap, nagtutulong-tulungan. Tulong-tulungan. Almost every morning, you know, this is the car that brings me here. So these are the root crops. Uh, we're planting peanuts and sweet potato and ube and uh, we have gathered here uh, a collection of tropical fruits so children very early learn about herbs and vegetables and, and fruits and flowers so we'd like also to gather uh, fruits and uh, uh, the biggest to, to build the biggest botanical garden here in the country you know that showcase the abundance of the Philippines so it's uh, creating different social enterprises uh, whose main goal is to really uh, uh, create uh, jobs no? and by bringing uh, the experts from the top universities in the Philippines and all over the world. So this is uh, 11 hectares of uh, land with 800 uh, mango trees 
and uh, we have uh, planted uh, an, uh, an arboretum and then also a bamboo setum. And this is the orchidarium that we're preparing in partnership with Assumption. Our herb garden is in partnership with uh, with St. Paul and we have now LaSalle students doing the arboretum uh, with us. So it's really also introducing the, the urban kids uh, to the land and for them to realize that there is just so much potential uh, for them to build their career and also their businesses here. Dumating kami dito sa Gaut Kalinga noong August 1, 2008 uh, dahil uh, na-demolish yung bahay namin doon sa San Jose Del Monte, Bulacan. Uh, illegal settlers kami. Eh, nasunugan po kami ng factory before. Eh, wala na po akong trabaho. Kaya isa po ako sa, gawin po ako sa sewing, uh, ano, sewing factory na nasunog. Kaya uh, gusto ko po na ma-enhance ulit po yung talent ko. Kaya ginrab ko po yung opportunity na magkaroon ng ano, partner na friends. Diyan nga si Fabian Cartel na in din ni to Tony sa amin na gawin sa friends. Kaya andito po kami ngayon sa Gawad Kalinga na nagpapatunay na talagang maganda po yung buhay namin dito sa Gawad Kalinga dahil po sa tulong po ni Tito Tony at saka ng iba pong entrepreneur na local at saka foreign entrepreneurs po. When I started being a volunteer for GK three and a half years ago, I started about almost three years ago, I started venturing into making bamboo toys, toys and bamboo. Then it's since October 2012 that we started making the stuff toys. And when I was 21 years old, then basically the question in front of me was, what do I want to do with my life? What if I'm part of the team that can build the first farm village university in the world that will bring million people out of poverty? What if I start my own business that will actually create jobs for 500 mothers? Back in college, I studied master entrepreneurship. So it was totally in line with my studies, but I added a purpose on top of it. And it, it changed everything. The thing is, GK is about ending poverty, Gawad Kalinga is about bringing 25 million people out of poverty, and, and the model is actually something that I believe in. Pero sabihin nila, kulang sa ampong peraso nung first delivery, bahapon. Hindi kasi gabi naman ni Tito Sheer, dapat kompleto yun eh. Oo, dapat 230 pieces. Pero di ko alam sabihin nila, kulang sa ampong. Sampo. Sampo peraso. Ay, in-chuck ko yun eh. Chuck ko bilang namin kasi dito siya nakakakon. Buti, hindi sila mag-take kasi I could have delivered ng 10 pieces. Hindi, sorry, dagdag mo na lang sa Monday. Yes, sa Monday na lang. I-abol na lang. 160 sa Monday. We go back to the workshop, Dali. to make like about 30 pieces a week before and now it's it's easily uh, close to 2,000 pieces a month and this is the regular production but we have 
orders, uh, exceptional orders that are coming on top. So there are some months where, like Christmas, it's really the time where we produce much more than than March, April. But there is no very formal training here. It's more we try and we improve it. It's trial and error. So actually, for the past for the past two years, I actually don't pay myself. So my priority is uh, first to provide them incomes and to make sure of the sustainability of the business. So every extra income or every extra money that we have, we keep on investing it. We keep on putting it back in the in the workshops. So we can acquire new machines. But I found a setup that allows me uh, basically to live without salaries. I live in the house of my production manager. So the more she earns, the more I can eat. I live in a house. So like for example, last month she was able to buy a ref. So now I have cold water. So the more their life evolves, the more their living conditions are improving, the more my life will improve also. And that's basically pushes me to, to challenge myself also to go to go the business. So they are, they are feeding me, they are, they are taking care of me. So, so to give you an idea, when we started this venture, when I started Flash and Play, my initial capital was about 100 euros. So it's five to 6,000 pesos. That was the only amount of money I had basically. And I, yeah. and I put it in on the table and I said, let's make it happen. Today, this is, this is about 3 million peso sales without any single investment. So we had no one putting money here. So it's all about cash flow, you know, you buy one yard of fabric, you make five stuff toys, you generate profit, you buy two yards, you make 10 stuff toys, you sell them, you buy three yards, you buy four yards, and eventually you are able to generate more cash flow, more financial sustainability, but you pay them first. That's the first thing you have to do. You need to have enough money to buy the next uh, material so they have the next production. Him. Uh, this is my uh, my lonely place, my uh, place of isolation, but also my place of inspiration. I just want to come to terms with the trees and the wind and the land, and uh, to see life in its simplicity. We are producing different. Uh, Types of ducks from Allard's, uh, Peking, and uh, and uh, Moscow Bee. So, for our duck eggs as well as for our duck burgers and our pato team. So we want to really develop uh, different types of uh, finished products so that and uh, develop uh, also the entire supply chain. But right now I'm also trying to mix breeds. So here I'm breeding a BB and an Itik, and I call it a Bitik. <laughs> so, because the chickens here and the ducks are happy because they're free and they eat naturally. We provide them azola, uh, which we grow here, and a lot of foliage and a lot of, uh, of grains that are grown here in the farm. So, we want the next generation to be healthy in our own country. So we have four flavors. So first we have Sulu, Sulu coffee. coffee. The coffee is branded as only for the brave because of its taste and it's the idea of you need to get the coffee from Sulu. And next we have the Salabat with calamansi zest. So Salabat is ginger that we have here, it's ginger tea. It's one of our flagship product because of its distinct taste. And third one we have Choco Chili. We use the cacao from Davao and um, Siling Nabuyo, which is the red chili. And the fourth one, which is not here right now, is Malungay. Malungay and Langka. Malungay is Moringa, which is a very healthy type of herb that we use here in the Philippines. Beside me, we have Alvi. Hi, Alvi. We're Abby, preparing our uh, golden duck confit. Now, it's a French inspired uh, recipe for preparing uh, duck. And what we're doing here is slow cooking the duck in uh, olive oil at a temperature below 100 degrees so that we make sure that we tenderize the meat completely perfectly. Then this will be going to our Enchanted Farm Cafe where it's one of our best sellers, our duck confit. Did the corporations ever ask what's well, this in it for us? Well, the, the, this, is road, this road was built by Shell. Well, in this life, 
there has to be something for everyone. So again, we create shared value. We want to create a win-win situation for the poor as well for corporations who want to help the poor. Being a, a leader no, in green innovation as we are in the automotive business, having, ha having I would say, contributing to the carbon footprint in the, in the environment, I feel that it is time for us also, uh, I would say, to come up with some programs or projects that will address this concern. And this came out with the Hyundai Center for Green Innovation in Angkat, Bulacan. Definitely, we wanted it to be a showcase of the Filipino community. We wanted this to, to become, I would say, an image of what green innovation is for in the eyes of the Filipino people. <laughs> so, this is becoming like a tropical garden. Uh, that's, uh, we'd like to have a complete collection of all tropical blooms. Some French engineers who help us build this and uh, the head of GKUSA, Tony Elias from San Diego, was the one who funded the whole project. So this is really, the, these are just miracles of solidarity that allow us to really create this beauty from a wasteland. And our goal is to really just bring out the abundance of, of this country uh, through the hard work and uh, of uh, people uh, that society has uh, forgotten and now they have become the centerpiece you know of uh, the, the stones that were rejected have become the centerpiece of nation building discover the beauty and the abundance of the countryside corporations will be doing their team building a lot of training for farmers will be conducted here and uh, foreigners will learn to study, we'll, we'll study sustainable development. We will have a lot of interns guests and guests. Countries. Yes, and here this is where we, they will see the magic of the, the, the of being Filipino. Yes, this is the this is the the farm where goodness grows. That's why we call it Enchanted. invited me to be part of a youth uh, ministry and that started my relationship with Tito Tony when I was about 16 years old. So I am now 43, so uh, I would say that my relationship with Tito Tony is also that of uh, being my second dad. You, you have a visionary in Tito Tony and my role is to put it into action points so that uh, we'll be able to land it on the ground. So. I guess that that's my role. I'm a runway to this, uh, parang airport to this vision. I have to land the vision. In fact, it's quite challenging. Um, they come with uh, a little difficulty, but they need, especially if they stay for six months, to feel very fluent. Well, I advise them all to stay a minimum of six months, yes. wherever they go, um, 12 months if they can, yes. because they really do get into the language by the end of the day. And, uh, what we would like is for them not only to learn culture, language, mm -hmm. but to also understand the Asian market. Of course. Well, I mean, <laughs> this, this is a business this goal. This is a crucial thing. Yes, crucial thing. that's why I'm here, because yeah. I want them to see the Philippines now as the hub for social business. In Asia. Because China might be the center for commercial business, yeah. but uh, you see, we're not very comfortable with that. No. Well, I'm really looking forward to hearing what you're saying because we're looking to put together next year a, an interreg project with other European partners to look at how an experience, international experience abroad, help develop uh, any young person this spirit of entrepreneurship. This ability to adapt to a market, find out what a market needs, and, do. and I think the social side is something that we need to develop more and more. Uh, so I'm very, and, and that that works both ways, because of the many interns we've had from all over the world, is the French that have really uh, understood our concept of. Uh, of social business, of yes. bottom of the pyramid, wealth creation, exactly. of social justice. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's why I, I prefer that. Thank you. <laughs>
this is this is who I am, you know. And so I built my life on the values I was raised with, and the vision of a world without poverty, without cruelty, without uh, oppression. So, and this is something I share with the French. I feel that my role is to be the bridge for public-private partnership, and for me to be. Uh, the ordinary citizen who has no desire for power and no desire for wealth for myself. And I discovered the way that, that Gandhi has also shown us that by not desiring power, I gain the trust of the most powerful people in the country. By not desiring wealth for myself, I, des I gain the trust and the support of the wealthiest people in my country. So. I anchor this on what I would call our built philosophy that you just connect with the good in people because there is so much goodness in human beings and you can create the greater good. So I even work with politicians that people think are corrupt because even if they're corrupt, if they're 90% corrupt, there's at least 10% good. So I connect with the 10% good. And maybe in working with them, it will become 20 or 30 or 40% because Life is about continual, cont it is always transformation, it's about renewal. And this is something I share with the French because when they come to the Philippines, they have a very a great appreciation of Gawad Kalinga's uh, concept of social justice. Now we're talking about the economic platform and we can build, uh, we can create wealth for the bottom of the pyramid with social justice. We have to create wealth where no one will be left behind. So it, you talk about religion. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of religion people uh, practice or something like that. If they are in the need, Gawad Kalinga is here for them. Well, we don't like uh, religion that divides people because I do believe that, uh, that uh, every human being is, uh, is family, that we should build a world where no one is an enemy, a victim, or a prey. We realize that in France, you, you, you build this country on values. You, you build families on values. So we would like the French to consider the Philippines as their home because man, the most to me advanced country in the field of social innovation and social entrepreneurship you know, is France. But social business is the business of the new world. The Philippines is the most exciting place to be in Asia now. It's so exciting to really discover who we are and really define who we are, not allowing the world to define us anymore. If I do it in GK, I belong to a whole army of people. And it's a growing army every day. With the help of an army of volunteers whose recruits are drawn from schools, churches, mosques, from every possible sector, Gawad Kalinga has transformed more than 2,000 slums into peaceful, productive communities. I say we are here to claim our victory, that together we can end poverty by 2024. Although he would not consider a cabinet position or entertain the suggestion of running for president, Antonio, Tony, is ranked as one of the most trusted people in the Philippines. Social artistry is uh, the human creativity that is used to transform the lives of uh, society. In our own backyard, and uh, we're starting to discover the genius of our people, their creativity. That's why this is, for me, the most exciting phase in our own journey, because I call it, you know, this is social artistry. No, every Filipino now is, uh, you know, is this is a de the designer phase. We're now, you know, unleashing our creativity. I value the freedom to serve more than the power to rule. He says. Po ang pinakamayaman na lupa, pinakamatalino, pinakamagaling na mga mamamayan, pinakamayaman po na kalikasan. I am a Filipino. This is who I am, and this is I will live with honor.
Uh, we're going to Alunan Bye Bye, the place where I was born. I, I was born inside in the house, and uh, and that's where I grew up and and lived until I finished high school. It's not far from my, the Rizal Elementary School where I walked every day to go to school, and then later on to go to Negros Occidental High School. So it ito danda dere hinahinay lang dito sa dason. Dason nga balay, dason nga balay, dason nga balay. Aring kay babes ya, aring yellow nga balay, amuning amon. Ah. So, ari di sa una, puro ni sa una, lunangon lang ni kagdason. Katungga na di sa dalom, pakadto sa baybay, sa likod na amon diri ihawan. No? Uh, daan na ni nga balay, sang lolo ko pa, kag sang... Dari kami sa dalom nag star Inlaw ka sa ako, no ay? No, I was born in this house, in uh, the ground floor. And uh, growing up in the place where I felt that I was handicapped by lack of pedigree, <laughs> lack of, uh, of money, I uh, grew up in an uh, environment without the, you know, uh, things that uh, that would make life comfortable. So, pag may bisita si Lolo sa una, I was always asked to declaim. <laughs> and uh, so, but uh, I was always out in the streets. So, these are my grandparents. As you can see, my... My grandfather was uh, was quite good looking and tall. That's why probably I I am tall. He looks this way. Yeah, he was Palermo. It's an old house. No. Where do you still live? We used to live in the in the in the basement, in the in the ground floor. No, and uh, there were six siblings. But I had a sister who was severely retarded, who was crying every day throughout my life as, as a teenager. I could never bring friends home. I had a brother who's autistic, who had no concept of guilt. At the age of uh, grade four, they discovered that I had a brain. So I became number one in class, and that became a pattern. Wa man ang tuon ka tingala ko kanin nga aka kan kan duay mo kita ka tuon na kung di nya na ko ka Oh hindi nga la ko ni ko duay makukita si mo go tuon nga do So I suppose I became, I was a dreamer and I always challenged the impossible But all along I said you know if I had a chance I would explore the world that's why I was always climbing roofs my mother was a public school teacher. My dad also started out as a public school teacher, but eventually became a clerk in a company. But we lacked a lot of things. We didn't own a car. My, my parents never owned their own house. So, and then we never traveled. So, and I went to public schools and I walked to school. But I thought that I could always dream. No one could ever, you know, put a limit to that. We live very simply, but very honestly. And uh, uh, both my parents, I guess, uh, were very de devoted as parents. And uh, it was the, it was again the simple life and the honest life. In a sense, from the beginning, when I started to really strive to make something out of myself, that I became, the pressure was that you're the source also of hope for your own family. Before, when the children were growing up, I would really feel very lonely because they were just uh, small kids. But now that they're grown up, I, I really find uh, um, 
so much, so much uh, fulfillment in them and the companionship that they give me because uh, it's a blessing that we just live nearby. Celine is a very good, it's a very good help also because they're always away and she's a constant companion even in my sleep. Even before, uh, I would ask them if, they, if they're open to have another sibling. Uh, the girls were very open uh, to have one, but Jay wasn't. When the time that Celine came, um, so we discussed, we discussed every one of us, uh, all the, I, I remember it was uh, Wawi's birthday and then I said, there's a new member in the family that's coming, are you open? It was Jay who was the first one to say, I want her name Celine. Hannah Celine means a gift from heaven. The biggest consequence for me is early on, we, I, I, I've been, I've coped with it and maybe my sisters coped with it also because we realized that Tony Meloto, our dad, uh, wasn't really our, ours, our dad anymore only. He was the father to many and when we realized that then the earlier we accepted that, then the earlier we were okay with it, of not, of not being with him in special locations and on weekends. So that's the biggest uh, repercussion for me, but we're fine with it now. The funny thing is, in my graduation, he wasn't able to attend. But in my sister's graduation, he wasn't able to go, but so did my sister. Which one, Anna? No, Camille. Because, because there was a GK event, and my sister would rather go to that GK event than go to her own graduation. Patience? Um, once a year, I blow my top, <laughs> and he would, yeah, and he would say, oh, okay, 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 I, I'll slow down. But that's just only for a, an hour. <laughs> when, I, when he sees that I'm already pacified, uh, He'll, he'll go back. I throw things away, and uh, I throw things at everywhere. He gives me that space to blow up. We've always thought that he was special, ever since we were young, and even before Gawad Kalinga blew up. But we've always thought he was and maybe because he was our dad, the parang when you were a kid, the parang oh dad, your dad's the best or whatever. Na parang even when your classmates are putting businessman or doctor, and then we were writing missionary. <laughs> Having such a public father made us kind of reluctant public figures as well, especially with Camille. I think Camille, it, like, is more sensitive to that because she's the most private person out of. All of us. It's sometimes we don't want to be obvious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she, yeah, she, she doesn't want her, you know, parang out there. But my dad's always like talking about us and talking about what um, we're doing. And I mean, I understand because in 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 a way that's also reaching out to other people and making us or him more relatable and stuff like that. If there's one thing that I've learned and applied in my life, I think it would have to, it, it's how to be a father myself. You know, I love my, I, I love Tony, I love my dad, but I'm, I'm really the anti-Tony as a father. Uh, like everything he did, I would do the opposite now to my own child.
to my own children, to my son. He has this way Now, when he talks to people, parang he engages people. Eh. And we knew that it was parang extraordinary. Na our friends sometimes would, do that, would go to our house to hang out with him, not with us. He's this figure, but like to us, there's yeah. not much difference because he's still a dad. He's still a real person. He's not some, you know, big shot. He's just Papa. <laughs> but the downside is my mom. Because <laughs> like, we're okay. Because she's enough. But yeah. I don't go with her. <laughs> so, I know. I know that she's just trying her best to be both the mom and dad. That's why I never felt the emptiness of not having a dad. But it's different when you're the wife. And sometimes you will feel, we would feel her, we would feel her sadness or, na parang, of course, she misses Papa. Yeah, the loneliness, it's, it's different when it's your husband. I think I've learned to live with it. Uh, of course, it wasn't easy uh, at the start. But through the years, I know that I cannot make him or uh, she, he cannot be a normal husband or a normal father. So uh, I just had to accept his mission, accept his uh, a uh, sense of urgency to help. People, and whenever people uh, tell me, oh, you're just, you're, you're, you're following after the footsteps of your dad, that's why you're doing GK. And I just, ha, no. <laughs> I just say, no, I do this because I believe in it, but really, literally following his footsteps, I, I, I would never dream of doing it. For me, there's only one Tony, maybe I could be, I could be him. Maybe I have what it takes, but I don't. I don't want it. I'll just leave it up to him. There's only one visionary Tony Milota, and I'll just be a regular Jay with my family. Fun, huh? There's a band tonight. There will be dancing. Hi. You... Thank you for coming. Thank you. We're good. we're preparing for the show tomorrow. Yes, I know. <laughs>
time he visit um, Bacolod, he usually have somebody to pick him up at the airport. Um, he told me that nobody is answering phone because he's calling up somebody who's going to pick him up. Take a wood like, hey, why pa ko inogbaya? Diri sa tubig, nag-order ko, ay kukat. So I told him, Tito, you can take the cab. So he told me, Mick, I don't have any money. So I just laughed. And so, yeah, I remember Tito Tony doesn't bring any money at all. Now, words of inspiration from our founder and father, of course. Okay, so let's welcome. We're honored to have him tonight. Yes. Yeah, we hear Ali Nisha. Okay, but I know Negros Occidental is close to his heart. Yes. And so tonight, let's welcome Tito Tony Minoto, the father and founder of Ground Pitima, to give us a message. We have gone through uh, heaven and hell together. Good times and bad times, but it was always great times with God. And uh, pinakamahalaga sa lahat na nangyari with Copos for Christ was when Gawad Kalinga came to life. That this country is poor because we keep leaving the poor behind. So you are the Copos for Christ who will help end poverty in the Philippines. But we expanded our definition of family na ang tanan nga kawatan pamilya, ang tanan nga drug addict pamilya, ang tanan nga pigado pamilya. Kaya kung palangaon natin sila, maabot ang tiwon diri sa Pilipinas nga wala na sa drug addict, nga wala na sa kawatan. Our love for our country is an expression of our love for God. And our love for the poor as family is to me the deepest expression of our love for God. And so tonight is a night of celebration. Hindi makamo, normally you're not habitual drunkards, but tonight we are going to drink beer. And you normally, and tonight you are going to dance. Tonight is a celebration of hope. And it is because of your hard work, your sacrifice, and your honesty that we are regaining the trust of the world. And it is because of you that this country will become more honest. Our caretaker teams are, they're what make this work great. They're the reason why we win awards. These are people who have work, they have regular jobs, and on weekends they'll come to communities. And they're the ones that do it day in and day out. When somebody gets sick, they're the ones that are out there helping families, and they're the key. They're what make we, I find that we take too much credit, and this is the army that makes it happen. I had many moments no? when you, you go through a lot of struggle, when you go through a lot of stress, I just uh, cry my heart out. Because no? uh, uh, there were moments in the past that I could not comprehend you know, the, the immensity of the responsibility I had and my feeling of adequacy. And that has always been to me my, my journey, always feeling uh, inadequacy. Some official from the Vatican who started criticizing Tony Melotto for, um, I think the issue then was, if I recall right, Tony used to accept all sorts of donations from everybody. He accepted all sorts of, of uh, donations from all quarters. His, his, uh, his, uh, um, his rationale being, or his motto being, that he'd take, uh, he'd take even from the, from the trappos, the traditional Philippines, politicians in the Philippines, so long as it was going to be used for the poor, he didn't mind. I think what the official objected to was Gawad Kalinga accepting money from the pharma pharmaceutical uh, companies that were producing contraceptives. So 
uh, and eventually the, the, the logic was, uh, the reason he was doing that was that he had forgotten his religious roots, which became more and more secular, so that that, that, uh, that was inevitable, that, that he'd end up doing things like this because, yeah, he was being lured more to, towards secular concerns. It's sad, though, that uh, this was uh, started by our community of Couples for Christ, but eventually uh, the community split up because of this work. And uh, it's uh, very sad, no? But uh, why it happened, uh, I think, uh, the human factor. Why ito kay Cindy sa tao kung anong kumulay din niya? Na nagawa'y kumuhuan. Why sa kabalukan dugo bilog ng kalawasan? Why na yan? Ano ba ito? Surisis. Kasi na wala na siya kiyo. Why siya kiyo? Kinanglan, mahuhuay, tulog. Hindi mo po pwede ka pahuhuay. So kung magpahuhuay ka, nangyay ko sa magpahuhuay, hindi mo siya mapulong. Matapla na siya doon tayo na agad-agad. Ano po sa bata ka pa lang? 38 po nag-watch siya. Tipig sa room mo, manabla nga all the luxury, all the glory, all the power ginatag si mo. Hindi na yan mong ako na destiny. I cannot even indulge myself. Pila ka, duwa ka administrasyon, nag-offer nga mag-cabinet secretary mo. Ikaw ni Pan. Kasubo ako na, so mga presyore mo lagyan ko si Dito. Hindi mo na yung tawag sa akin. Magkagamtang ko na po yung pinaghirapan po namin mag-asawa bagamat wala na po siya. Ayaw nga pala. Kasi lisi. Kaya lang lang kasi wala pang 40 days. Ay, may 40 days na ba? Mayroon na. Hello. Kasi pare. Hello, kumusta? Kung ikaw mamili, kung ikaw sakali. Huwag natin dadaan sa raffle. Anong saan doon ang gusto mo? Ito sa malapit sa kalsada, sa 88, o dito sa Bank of America? Kung saan na yung makakuha, yun malapit sa kalsada. Sa taas o sa baba? Kahit saan doon, basta ano. Sa kalsada na yan. Sa kalsada. Yan ba siya sa amo? Wala po. Ayon sa trabaho po. May, nasa, nasa trabaho pa? Bukas po kasi meron, di ba usapan natin, naka-uniform tayo, yung naka-white, ano? Bilang, yun ang, yung ating kaisahan, tapos, uh, yun naman yung dati natin yung gagawin pag may okasyon tayo, ano? Tap, dali mo rin yung mga anak mo, ha? Si brother, may pasok ka mo, paano yun? Uh, absent po, nagpapalam papalam po siya sa trabaho na... Okay. Sinab sinabi po na ano, na ano po siya sa awardee nga po. Okay. Naalala ko tuloy ang anak mo. Oo nga po eh. Dahil sa pagtatrabaho. <laughs> Kung hindi ko nakita anak mo, nangitim na sana, no? Eh, pero yun mo dito, bumaba ko dito nun eh. Talagang kinuha ko nun yung bata sa ilalim eh. Ito na ba yun, di ba? Oo po. Ito yung muntik ng madali, no? Itatumaw po ako sa yung mga maliliit ko lang po, anak, kasi para magampanan ko po ang aming tungkulin dyan sa site, mabuo po yung aming mga tahanan. Inatang ko muna sa anak ko na 8 years old magbantay sa aking anak na maliit kasi para magambalan ko nga po yung tungkulin ko. Kasi sila lang tapo na naiwan, 
nang hinihila nila, hindi nila makuha. Ang ginawa nung dalawa kong, ay tatlo kong anak, umiiyak na lang, umihingi ng tulog. Mabuti nga po, napadaan po si Pres. Sabi nila yung baby daw, naipit doon sa gilid, nahulog. Kaya si Pres, dali-dali naman pumunta sa ilalim. Pero wala po kung sa alam-alam na nahulog na pala yung anak ko. Patayin ko na ilaw ha? Patayin ng ilaw! Patayin ko na ilaw! para maganda siya doon sa pag stitching. Naka-attach pala yun sa holder niya no, yung star. Oo. Tatlo pero lahat may hawakan. Oo, ay may ay may kitchen talaga siya. Ito 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 to, may ganito. Ay, oh, ito itong handle niya kailangan naka medyo naka-curve siya konti. Ah, sige sige. Sige. Tapos na yung pang 75 mo? Tapos na po. Nabago to? Okay. Ito, dagdagan mo ito. Hindi malambot. Bulang sa ano? Bulang sa fiber. Okay. Ah, ano nga. Pero maganda. Ha, sanay ka na, no? <laughs> sanay na. Oh, sanay na rin. Sanay na rin. Okay. Sige, Tia. Sige. Medyo ano-anuhan mo lang ito. Lambot pa. Thank you sa Jude, magkano lahat na i-out mo na yung 11,250? Total sales? Ako sa total sales. Na-plus mo yung Kati Ashley mo, 10,000. Ayan yung 11,250. 11,250. 17,13,9. 10, 24,100. Ayan pera mo. Ha? Pwede ka nang pasahin. Kung kanakit mo yung mga 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 kanakit mo So, ito ito siya. Ilan po nagawa niyong kamatis kitchen? 450 kamatis body cutting, sewing, attach kitchen, 265. Ito yung body cutting yun? Sir, ito lang, 267. Ito yung pusa. Ako ang maligat sa akin ngayon. Ganda ng pusa mo, tipe at tipe. Ang pusa mo yung sariling mundo siya. Ah, ito. Ayo, apa nak pelai? Al tanggi. Di kau makan abu kau nanti. Di kau makan abu kau nanti. Besar, besar. Kita makan sayur. Selamat. See you next week. See you. See you. So, dumating na po yung ating executive director, Tito Ernie Mahipi. Tanyo po sila. So, thank you very much for coming. Again. So, pwede po tayong... Huwag po na lang po. Yan na lang. Dahil sa sobrang excited, ano? 
At alam mo natin na masayang pa siya, lalo po yung mga tatanggap ngayon, araw nito. Kaya congratulations po. Kunti, kunti, please, please lang po. Maraming salamat po, Brother Bart. Uh, ako po'y na, napapahiya pag uh, pinapakilala na uh, katulad ngayon kasi ang ang naghirap dito, hindi naman ako. Uh, yung mga mga tao na nagpakita ng kabayanihan, ng nagpakita ng uh, malaking pagmamahal sa Diyos at sa bayan at sa kapwa. Sila po ni Brother Bart, kaya po dinadayo tayo. So today we're gathered here no, uh, just to show the world uh, the miracle of solidarity. The power of kindness no, that can transform uh, an urban slum into a beautiful community. How victims can turn tragedy into hope that they can build on the ground. And what to me is really amazing is that they did this not just uh, for their own personal interest. And you hear our their leader is saying that he will be uh, one of the last to receive benefit from this community. And so, uh, we are seeing this miracle happen because it's bringing out the best in everyone. Masaya pa kayo? Of course! No? Finally, masaya ang Pasko, masaya ang bagong taon kasi meron na tayong bagong tahanan, di po ba? Yung first batch po natin, no? sila po yung unang magkakaroon. Pero wag pong mag-alala yung mga susunod na batches kasi pag nauna ang first batch, natural meron ding second batch. O, aalugin na po ng aking kasama ng Ang napulot po ni Nilda ay ito na po, Jake, uh, ba, Bank of America, Jake, yung kalinga, Unit 12. Pirma, pirma. Pirma, pirma. Ah, ayan, ang pinunod po nila, ayun, Jake, all 86, Unit 7. Tuwa-tuwa dito, thank you, all 86. Tuwa.
talaga pinasya namin na hindi mo na sumabay sa unang bats kasi bilang uh, leader eh, kailangan pa unang namin yung ating mga membro mo na so, sumu para, sumusunod lang po kami sa prinsipyo ng Gabitalinga na una sa servisyo huli sa benefisyo Kaya, pero masaya kami sa aming naramdaman po talaga overwhelmed po, happy happy kami talaga masaya masaya At, uh, wala namang problema kasi magkakaroon din naman kami hope there's a way of solving many of these problems. Well, Tony's a dreamer. He's like he's like the pipe pipe. Can you not believe the person when the things that said seven, five years, three years ago is slowly happening? I wish that there could be a hundred Tony Melotas. One of, the, one of some of the greatest achievements in this world have been done by crazy people who have chased crazy windmills and tried to get the impossible done. In the past, he would always say something like, out of this world, but then uh, through the years, I have seen that not just our family that's existing, it's like several different families that make up our community, that make up Manila, that make up the Philippines, that make up the world. So if we give them the basic needs, if we allow them to live in dignity, and if we help them discover their confidence, they're all on their way. Whether they're poor in 2024 or not, they'll be on their way, and it'll just be a matter of time. I see a future full of hope where the streets will be safer for my children and grandchildren. I see a future where more of us will use whatever education we get from the top universities here and abroad to go back to the countryside, to go to the rural areas and to create abundance out of our wasteland and that we will no longer accept cruelty or violence. I see a time in 2024 when 5 million Filipinos will be able to help themselves out of poverty and help one another out of poverty. A future where people will realize the power of kindness. My own vision of the promised land, that by 2024 we would have been free from a colonial mentality. That we will now really be a country where we are all equal in worth and dignity. That is not just a matter for the brightest, the best, and the most powerful. For, for us to use our education, our strength, to bring as many people to cross the finish line. That's the challenge of many young people today. They don't know how to dream anymore. They have ambition, but they lack vision. And without vision, you perish, and you bring people along with you.
pawis, binuhos mo. Para pagsapan na lang ka mula sa edad ko na sa ngayon, 47. Eh mula pa ako sa Diliman. Lahat na ng paghihirap. Pero hindi mo akalain. Ang biyayang bigay ng Diyos, andyan lang pala. Bukas ba doon? Hindi. Bukas. kung saan tayo nang galing dahil ang biyaya ng Diyos lagi nandiyan lang hindi niya iiwan lagi niya ibibigay kaya nga po sabi ko sa mga anak ko kailangan ang lagi mong kayamanan ang pakikisama pag wala kang pakikisama nag-iisa ka